Hey, what's going on, guys? Uh, welcome to this week's uh, Recon Angling Live show. And tonight we're going to be talking about uh, the beginner's guide to lake trout fishing through the ice. Uh, so we got a lot of information going on tonight. So uh, we have an agenda. What's going on, Chris? What's going on, Eric? We have a pretty uh, packed agenda for this. So we're going to try to keep it focused. The show will probably be about if we're going to cover everything and answer questions looking at about an hour and a half, two hours long, uh, going over this stuff. So we're going to do the, the basics, uh, to lake trout fishing. Uh, before we get started though, I uh, just want to do a shout out to, uh, the newest sponsor razor ice augers. Uh, so you guys can see the logo up here. Um, razor ice augers. If you haven't go ahead and check them out. Uh, amazing augers, uh, go give them a, a, a like on Facebook. Uh, you'll be seeing some more content uh, from them from me here in the future. But uh, let's get going. We're going to do a rundown real quick of what we're going to talk about tonight. So uh, first things first, ice safety. Know before you go. Then we'll dive into electronics, basic to advanced. Rod and reel setup. The key phrase for this, be prepared. Even if you're going for little fish, if especially, you know, if you're lake trout fishing, sometimes you'll be catching little ones, big ones will come through. We're going to make sure that you guys are as prepared as possible with your gear. So if you get a big fish, you're not harming that fish and fighting it too long. Uh, and you can get it on, on light tackle if you need to. Bait selection. Uh, that's going to kind of tie into uh, where are the dang fish? So um, come on. Oh, it wants to go down as a ticker. Um, where are the dang fish? So that's going to go into where are these fish hiding at? Then we're going to go back into uh, presentation, utilizing the whole water column. Don't just focus on the bottom. Don't focus on mid water column. We're gonna. I'm going to go over uh, what you want to do to kind of utilize that whole wa water column because those fish are moving all over the place. And then uh, keeping the fish on. That prevents fish stories, right? The big one that got away or, you know, I would have had them, but this happened. So we're going to go over techniques of how to keep those lake trout on. Lake trout are some of the hardest fish, ice fishing to keep on your bait. So we're going to talk about that. And then lastly, we're going to end the show talking about Buckboard Marina's Population Control and Domination Tournament. That's going to be at Flaming Gorge Reservoir, uh, February 11th and 12th. So that is kind of the overview of what we're going to be talking about tonight. Uh, periodically, I'll be going back and forth and checking comments. But like I said, uh, <clears throat> we're going to try to keep a laser focus tonight. Usually, you know, we're, uh, you know, we're laid back and, and doing a few things. But tonight we're going to be uh, a little bit more focused. Uh, my lighting is driving me nuts tonight. Uh, thanks, Landon. What's going on, Tyler? Uh, what's going on, Jake? Uh, Damien, what's going on, guys? So we're going to get into ice safety. Know before you go. So a lot of lakes were, you know, that are really popular, Colorado, Wyoming, that are really popular for lake trout fishing are some of the most dangerous lakes there are for ice fishing. Big bodies of water, right? Uh, ice conditions are going to vary. Some parts are going to freeze sooner than others. You have springs underneath the water. Uh, that are constantly changing ice conditions. So one thing I always do, I keep a spud bar. Um, I, I, I'm checking the ice as I go out. Just because you've been out there before doesn't mean that the ice is still safe. Last year, for instance, at the gorge, I was you know fishing on a foot of ice, driving around on my four-wheeler, came to a spot that looked sketchy. Now, how does a spot on the ice look sketchy? Uh, usually it's a little bit different color than other ice around there. Uh, if there's snow around a bunch of spots and then the snow looks a little different color or maybe there isn't any snow, that's a spot you're going to want to check with a spud bar before walking onto it, making sure you have your ice picks on and ready to go. You know, those of you guys who have uh, striker suits, um, you know, with floating capabilities, there's plenty of companies out there now with floating uh, suits that have all this technology that if you do fall through the ice, it'll keep you above the water, keep you safe, keep you warm, keep you alive. There's, the most important thing to remember is no fish is worth your life. None. Absolutely none. There's no fish that's worth your life. 
Uh, just be careful on the ice. You know, just because you see somebody out there doesn't mean it's safe for you to walk out there, um, you know, without checking uh, what's going on. So uh, that's kind of the ice safety. Know before you go, right? So now let's talk about electronics. We're going to start out with the basics and we're going to work our way up to advance. So ice fishing for lake trout is extremely easier if you have electronics, right? It doesn't matter if you have um, live scope, a flasher, um, you know, a Helix 5 or, you know, a, a Garmin unit that has both the your traditional 2D and the flasher. Um, having any kind of electronic is going to up your game in lake trout fishing. Uh, lake trout, for the most part, are very curious and aggressive fish. So a lot of times, you know, you can you can reel the bait away from them. There's certain different presentations that having electronics is gonna is gonna uh, help your game. Now, what if you don't have electronics? That's fine. Uh, if you just have you know something that tells you what the depth is, uh, that's gonna help you out. Now, if if you if you don't have electronics, you can play uh, the bottom game, which is the pound game, right? So you're just kind of jigging on the bottom, letting your bait hit. If this is the bottom right here, letting your bait come down like this and then hopping it one to two inches off the bottom and just doing that. And those lake trout will slam it just doing that. So it's a good way if you don't have electronics or maybe you're sharing a, a flasher, uh, figuring out that depth, getting your bait down on the bottom and just kind of, you know, giving that popping motion on the bottom if you don't have electronics. Hey, what's going on, Tony? Um, if you do have electronics, obviously you're going to be able to uh, do a little bit more different presentations. Um, you know, your regular flashers are a good way. It gives you a basic idea. Now it's going to be a cone. So if you imagine the tip of my fingers here are the bottom of the ice, this is what your transducer is going to see. So the deeper water you're in, the bigger cone you're going to have at the bottom. A lot of guys like to have a narrow a narrow cone, uh, which helps them focus on what's right underneath them. It has its advantages and disadvantages. A disadvantage is you're not going to see that lake trout until it is on your bait, which sometimes is good, sometimes it's bad. Um, you know, if the fish is already there and you change up your presentation, maybe they won't bite. Um, you know, but having that flasher will tell you kind of what's going on. Now you move into the other stuff here, which I'm going to lift this sucker up. Um, this is the live scope unit here. So you can see on this, I have it, I have a split screen. So I have the live scope um, on one side and the flasher on the other side. So that's really good if you're fishing deep water. Um, a lot of you guys, um, you know, want some videos and information on using live scope in deep water. Uh, next Sunday, I'm going to be live with Garmin um, on the uh, ice cold, uh, the Garmin ice cold fishing show. And we're going to be talking about deep water lake trout using live scope, the settings to have and everything like that. So we're not really going to go over that tonight. Um, but what's beneficial about that and having the live scope, you can see these fish from far away and how they react to your jigging and then fine tune your jigging when that fish comes in to your bait. With the flasher, you'll be able to see it at deeper depths. So if you're fishing, you know, anything over 80 feet, live scope can be a little tricky unless you're using bigger baits. And when I mean bigger baits, I'm talking, you know, baits like this uh, that are six inches all the way up to 10 or 14. Um, so Eric wants to know what's the cost of the, li of the ice. We'll save that for, for another show. Eric, we got, uh, we got a lot of stuff to cover tonight. Um, you know, um, it, it varies depending on, uh, what stuff you want. So if watch the live show next week where we talk about live scope and stuff like that. Um, but having electronics really ups your game in the, in the lake trout stuff. So we're going to, if you guys have any questions electronic wise related to lake trout fishing before we move on, now's a good time, uh, to put it in there. We'll kind of give her a minute here. All right. I'm not really seeing anything. So uh, we're going to move on to rod and reel setup. Be prepared. So with that, 
Um, detecting the Laker bite. Okay, the, we'll we'll get into that, Steve. Uh, wh when we get there. Um, so right now we're just talking about getting prepared before we get out on the ice, and once we get there, um, yeah, chir chirp. What it does is it it messes with your cone angles. Uh, so, um, you know, and it helps you block out other signals from from other transducers that are on the same uh, on the same wa wavelength. That's the basic. Uh, basic gist of chirp it uh messes with your with your cone angles um what's going on david so talking about rod and reel setup so i have behind me here i have a couple different rod options um set up ready to go so for the first one here that i like to use um is this is a custom rod um you don't need a custom rod uh but this is a custom rod that i have set up here um, and you'll see on here, I have a 30 series, uh, Abu Garcia, Abu Garcia Revo X 30. So this is a 30 series that holds plenty of line. Why do we want plenty of line? These big fish are going to pull. They're going to, they're going to take, they're going to take a bunch of line out. I have 30 pound, uh, Berkeley X nine braid on here. And then you can go from anywhere from a, a 15 to a 20 pound leader. And now on my leader, I'll typically go anywhere from six foot to 15 feet. Uh, just kind of depends uh, if, if I know I'm going to be fishing shallow, shallower water, I use a six foot leader. If I'm fishing deeper water, I can, you can get away with, with uh, a longer leader. Um, but that's an example of one of the setups. And then another setup I have is, is just a, uh, let's see what size I forget. It's a 35 inch jaw jacker rod. Um, so this is a medium heavy. Um, so what you what you like to have with these with these rods, and we'll get into the question of feeling the bite, is you want a rod that has a fairly sensitive tip because these these fish, especially the bigger lake trout, um, you're gonna feel a slight tick. That's all you're gonna feel when these when these fish bite. Um, so shallow water, I would say anything 50 feet and under. So um, and then I use uh, typically floral leaders. Uh, so I use Berkeley's uh, big game floral leader. Uh, that's that's my favorite leader. Um, a lot of guys like using uh, P lines floral leader, but typically all, all my leaders are floral. Um, so you want something with a a slightly um, you know active or fast tip and then a nice backbone. You can see that this rod gets into the backbone fairly quick. Um, and having a rod that's around that 35 to 36 inch range, if you're going out for pups, is always good to have. Because if you pop into a bigger fish, you're going to be equipped to handle that fish and not fight it for a long time. Now, what's a long time fighting big fish? Um, I would say anything over 15 minutes is too long. Uh, fighting big lake trout. Typically, you know, the bigger fish, you'll you'll get to that 12 to 15 minute range. But typically, uh, you know, anything from a 15 to a 30 pound lake trout typically only takes about, you know, seven to 10 minutes to bring in if you have your stuff on there. Um, I, I don't really think lake trout are, are too line shy. I have the leader. Um, I've fished with braid direct and still caught fish. Um, I think it does, you know, having that leader on there um, does give you that little bit of, of a buffer with bigger fish. Smaller fish really don't seem to seem to uh, care. You know, when we're young, we're, you know, we're young and dumb, right? So a lot of these smaller lake trout are young and dumb. So um, you typically don't need to worry about that. Uh, as far as knots go, um, so to attach to the bait, I'm just doing your, your regular fisherman's knot. And then um, I'll show you real quick. And then when I tie my braid to my leader, um, I'll use a double surgeon's knot. Uh, but see if I can get the camera to zoom in here. But you can see that's just a usual uh, fisherman's knot there. There, there. You can use any knot that you're comfortable uh, with with doing on that. Um, so that's that's a couple of rods. And then I have a couple uh, bait casters set up too. If I'm big. If I'm fishing for big fish in my hut, I use a bait caster with braid uh, just because you really get the torque in that bait caster. You get those fish in quicker. 
Um, you know, they go on runs. Uh, your drag is a little bit smoother. If I'm fishing outside, I will stick to a spinning reel uh, just because your line doesn't uh, your line doesn't freeze up as bad. And, you know, it, if I'm fishing for pups, I'll use 10 to 15 pound uh, mono. Um, just your Berkeley big game is is really good. If you're fishing for smaller fish, you don't need you don't need to have the braid. I always have that on there. Yes, this tube is delicious. Um, you don't need you don't need to have uh, braid on there when you're when you're fishing for pups uh, per se. Uh, if I'm in the hut, I prefer to use braid just because you know you have the power that's behind the braid, and um, you don't have to worry about your reels freezing up or your braid freezing when you when you reel a fish in. Um, you don't have to deal with that. Outside the hut, I like to use uh, mono. And I usually don't, I don't do a leader in mono. Mono's fine. Uh, you just get it, get it down there and uh, get to fishing. So that's kind of the, the rod and reel setup. You know, if, if you're going to be fishing for pups, you want to have, you want to have a good 30 series spinning reel. And then you want to have a low profile bait casting. If, if you, if you prefer a bait caster, low profile, you know, with, with 15 pound test is plenty. Um, uh, and then the same thing, same thing with a spinning reel. A lot of times if I'm fishing for smaller fish, you can get away using 10 or 12 pound. Um, and then if you do hook into a bigger fish, uh, you know, you just have to be very, very cautious. I usually tighten my drag down pretty tight. So that way, um, you know, you're not, you're, you're, you want to wear that fish out quick so you can get them up and get them back down there. Uh, no, no, definitely no swivels. Um, Braid tied to floor, fluorocarbon. Yep. No, no swivels. So, uh, you know, the swivel is another thing that a fish can see. And I've seen it a lot where if you do have a swivel, the fish will come up and look at the swivel and not, not pay attention to the bait that's down below. Uh, it's just something extra that's, that's in the water that you don't need. Um, so we'll give you guys uh, about 30 seconds here. I know there is a, a leg from when I'm actually physically talking to when you guys, uh, are commenting back. Uh, so I'm going to give it about 30 seconds. If you guys have any questions on rod and reel setup, uh, and we'll go from there. Yeah. Uh, Thomas, we're not going to get into when is the Utah side captain safe, we don't say safe when we're talking about ice fishing. Um, and the Utah side, it, it rarely, it rarely freezes over on the Utah side and sheep Creek. It does here and there, but, um, that's usually some of the sketchiest ice on the lake. So we'll give it a few more minutes before we move on to uh, bait selection. Uh, Chris, it, it really depends, man. Um, you know, it's kind of a loaded question. If you're fishing, uh, you know, outside, I prefer to use, uh, especially if it's below freezing, I prefer to use a spinning reel uh, just because it doesn't ice up as bad. Um, you know, but if you're fishing uh, big fish, I, I definitely prefer to use uh, bait caster. Uh, you have more torque and you have more drag uh, capabilities on your reel. Uh, with a bait caster than you do um, than you do with a spinning. So e each one has its benefits and drawbacks. Uh, I've never really messed with an Invisa swivel, um, so I can't really tell you. I, I don't I don't like using swivels. It's one more thing that can get caught up in your reel when you bring it in and stuff like that. When you're reeling that fish in, it's one more thing to get kind of hung up. Um, so I, I don't have a whole lot of experience using, uh, an Invisa swivel. Um, I, I just, there's, in my opinion, there's, there's no need, uh, there's really no need for a swivel in the, unless you're, unless you're jigging spoons. Um, so Kendall wants to know if you match your lure weight with rod power, um, you know, yes and no. I mean, obviously I'm not going to go, I'm not going to go fish this bait, right. With, um, see if I can, I'm not going to go fish this bait with, 
with, with this rod, right? You know, that's just, that's too much. That's too much bait for that reel. If I'm using the stuff that I showed you, those 30 series um, reels and in the jigging rods, it, it typically doesn't matter a whole lot, um, you know, unless you're using like a jumbo bait. Um, but you really don't need to worry too much. You know, if you're finesse fishing with smaller baits, um, I'll use, pop this one out. I'll use this, uh, this rod here. Um, it's a little more flexible than the other ones. And I think this is, uh, this is a lost Creek that you can get a 48 inch rod that you can get at sportsman's warehouse. And this is a bait caster. I really like this rod. It's kind of a good rod. If you want to fish for both fish without spending the money with a custom rod. Um, it really gives you the best, the best of, of both worlds. It has that extended handle here, which you will use when you get those bigger fish on, but yeah, exactly. It's, it's, it's what Ben said. A, a real Laker rod will handle, will handle uh, the, the bigger baits. Um, but as you can see, I have a bunch of different rods. Uh, I've used so many rods over the years, and I've caught uh, big fish. What's going on, AJ? Uh, I've caught big fish, little fish, uh, uh, on every and every kind of rod, and I've kind of figured out where that sweet spot is. And so what I'm sharing with you guys right now are – a couple of giving you some options. So before we move on, uh, we're just going to key in on a few things, a 30 series, um, a 30 series or bigger. Uh, I think this is a 40. You don't really need to go any bigger than this. And I'll, I'll show you why it's important to have the right equipment. One of my biggest lake trout I caught through the ice. Um, let's see if I can get this to show up that I caught through the ice, I actually uh, caught on this rod here. And it was it was a couple years ago. It was just shy of 40 pounds. But what I'm about to show you is why it's important to have all this lighting is going to drive me nuts is why it's important to have. Do you guys see that there? That little you can see the crack and stuff. That's what happens when you have a bait or a rod that is too small for a 44 inch lake trout. This thing, it, this that fish was burning so hard it had this reel burning up, and it actually crock or cracked the reel seat on this rod, um, fighting it. And, and, you know that that's an extreme case, and that's where you know it prompted me to go in and have this is a is a is a custom fetters rod. So you got the carbon fiber handle, carbon fiber handle, and then you can see like this rod is made for big fish. Um, there's nothing wrong with the jaw jacker rod. It's a 35 inch rod. It's great for catching, you know, those, those lake trout, you know, those small ones up to 20 pounds. When you get bigger than that, you want to use bigger gear. So, um, Steve, uh, so yeah, there, there is, there is a difference, uh, with line stretch. Um, you know, when I'm using, when I'm using uh, mono, um, you know, typically it's on smaller fish. And so they're, the smaller fish are a little bit easier to puncture. Well, <sighs> told you my lighting's driving me nuts. So I guess my lighting's had enough of me too. Well, that's actually a lot better. Give me a second here. This thing wants to go nuts on us. There we go. I think we're good now. <laughs> Holy cow. All right. Hey, we can actually see you guys now. Um, that was fun. Uh, but going back to it yeah you if you're using mono you do want to set that hook a lot harder because you are going to have that stretch and you are going to miss more fish using mono than you will with braid i will say that so and that's and that's a difference too when you use a shorter leader you kind of loosen that amount now you do want a, a little bit of stretch is good and that's where having that leader plays plays a part into doing this uh what's going on torch um let's see Yep, yep, the fetters rods are the way to go. So, um, all right, so we're gonna move on from uh, rod and reel selection. Um, we, we've I've given you a couple different options. So you have this Lost Creek, forty eight inch. Now forty eight inch is a little bit long. I usually like you know I don't like to go any more than forty four, forty five. Um, but it is a really good rod. I think these rods are like twenty or thirty bucks at Sportsman's Warehouse. So it is a it's it's a good rod for the price. You got the jaw jacker rod. It's about the same 34 inch. Um, and then you get into your custom rods as well. So 
Uh, we'll get in. We'll get in the hook set here in a little bit, but uh, it's it's a combination of, of both on that, and it's something that when I take clients out, is I'd say one of the things that drives me uh, nuts the most is is doing uh, is, is the hook sets. Right, you don't need to go up like this. Um, and I'll show you some pictures of, of how you need to have your rod when you're lake trout fishing it and why. Uh, we'll get into that. Uh, kind of when we talk about presentation and keeping the fish on. So, yes, yeah, so Josh says he likes the Thorn Brother rods. You know, there's all different kinds of rods out there um, that you can use. So let's go into bait selection, right? I've caught lake trout on on uh, so much stuff. It's it's crazy. Um, there, there's a few a few go tos that I have. Um, that have caught me uh, a lot of fish and it usually just depends, you know, what lake you're fishing. What I catch fish on here at Flaming Gorge usually doesn't work too well uh, at Granby or Blue Mesa, you know, so it's, it's finding that. I, I will say I do have a few baits that are um, our go-to and favorites and I'll share those with you guys. And if you guys have baits that you like, you can go ahead and uh, throw them in the comment section. Um, also, if you guys are watching this live video, um, you, you saw that there was a post for a giveaway. So the giveaway is I'm giving away a half-day um, guided lake trout fishing. Um, if it's through the ice, it more than likely will not be this year. It'll be for next year. Um, if you want to do open water, uh, we can do that as well. That, that could happen this summer. But I'm giving away a fully guided lake trout trip. For two people, um, you guys are responsible, whoever wins, uh, for the taxes and the fees on that. Um, and uh, to do that, we're going to give – there was a post on the Recon Angling page from about a month ago. Um, some of you guys have done that. That's kind of closed. So um, if you want another opportunity, we're, I'm going to announce the winner probably tomorrow or the next day. But go ahead, and all you have to do is just like this live show. So all you have to do for you guys watching right now, just like the live show. You don't have to share it. I mean, if you want to share it, that's great. But just go ahead and like uh, the live show, and then I'll go through. And uh, everybody who liked it will get an entry, and everybody who did the rules on the previous post will get an, an added entry into that. So uh, we'll be live probably. I'm going up to West Yellowstone uh, to catch some little trout. And uh, so I'll probably go live and uh, announce the winner as well, um, and I'll do a post. So that's that's pretty much it. But uh, I forgot to mention that when we started. So if you guys are watching, hey, that's your opportunity. Just like the live show, and you're automatically entered. So we're going to talk about uh, some baits now. And the first bait is what I caught my Colorado, my biggest Colorado lake trout on is the Dynamic Lures HD or HD Ice in the Glow. Now my biggest Colorado lake trout was was about forty inches and uh, in the mid twenties to about thirty pounds. <laughs> caught on this little thing, and I've caught a lot of nice fish at the gorge on this, and the pups absolutely love this. So we're going to kind of talk about presentation and baits at the same time um, while we're going through and then also working the water column. So this bait here and any kind of lipless crank like this, right? Any kind of lipless crank like this um, works great. You can do what I was talking about earlier where you're just kind of one like this right off the bottom. So every time you lift up that bait's going down at the bottom, you're jerking it up. And what that's mimicking is a dying or wounded fish down on the bottom. And a lot of times I'll let it sit and count to two or three, and especially a little bit off topic, but if you're walleye fishing, that's a great opportunity. You give it a nice big rip and let it sit on the bottom and count to four or five. You catch a lot of fish. Same thing with lake trout, doing that quick motion like this off the bottom. Bait's on the bottom, pop it. You're not. You're only going about five or six inches at most when you're, when you're ripping it um, off the bottom. Um, you can also bring this about 10 to 15 feet off the bottom. And, I, you know, I'll, I'll jig it, but I usually just let this thing sit there. And I'm not joking, guys. If you fish Gramby and you just put this bait about 10 or 15 feet off the bottom and just let it sit, you will catch lake trout dead sticking. It is insane. Um, but 
What I like to do too is I will put this 10 or 15 feet off the bottom and you'll see the lake trout. So we're going to pretend this is the bait. This is the lake trout, right? So if this is your bait on the fish finder, you'll see the lake trout come up right here. A lot of guys want to, oh, hey, there's a fish coming up. Start reeling now. No, wait, be patient. When that bait gets about right there, when that fish is almost on the bait, you start reeling. And when you start reeling, a lot of times that fish is going to chase. Like if this is your bait and it's going up, that fish is chasing. A lot of times they'll stop. Your natural reaction is going to be to stop the bait. Don't stop the bait. Keep reeling. Because that fish, a lot of times what they do is they'll stop. And then once they stop, if they do that, I keep reeling and I'll give it a little pop like this. And so I'm reeling about this speed right here. So if you're using most any kind of, you know, your gear ratio is going to change your speed up a little bit. But I like to go about this fast right here when you're playing the chase game for lake trout. So when they come up, they're going to stop. I like to give it a little pop while I'm reeling and you'll see that fish shoot up and get ready because when that fish comes up, you're going to get what's called a negative bite. And if you don't know what a negative bite is, a lot of times when you're reeling and I'm watching my flasher, I will set the hook before I feel the fish on there. Why do I do that? You'll see your bait like this. And when that, when that lake trout comes up and basically your bait disappears, it's because that fish is coming up like this and the bait is in its mouth like this, and you're not going to feel anything. If you watch your line, like if your line's tight like this, you'll see your line shrink. That's when you want to set the hook. So um, <clears throat> and I'm going to try to get this line up so you guys can see what, what the line shrink is. Used. So you see how this line is tight when you get that bite? See how it just does that, just that little bit? That's a lake trout bite. A lot of times when you feel that tick, especially jigging on the bottom, or just dead sticking, that's that fish spitting that jig out. Um, so um, those of you that, that are watching again, all you have to do to be entered to win a, a free half-day guided lake trout fishing trip is just like the live uh, like the live feed here that we're doing. So you'll get that negative bite. So my favorite part is, is fishing this bait 10 to 15 feet off the bottom. Now, if the fish are coming up, and they're not biting uh, and doing stuff like that, I usually have a tube jig down at the bottom. So these are geez, these are just a little CJ Customs here, but you can use any white tube in that two to three inch range is killer for lake trout anywhere you go. Um, hey, Ross, uh, we, we went over all that stuff. Um, so once the live show is done, just rewind it and watch it. We just got done talking about rod and reel setup. Um, but these three inch baits here, um, are killer two to three inch white tube jig is one of the most productive lake trout, uh, baits that there is out there followed up by, um, the Yamamoto, just a regular three inch Yam Yamamoto curly tail grub in the glow right here. So if you guys are after pups, this, these are really killer baits that you can use to pound on the bottom, just like I was showing you with the with the HD ice to pound it on the bottom and to also do suspended. Yeah, we could do that. Talk about Mike. So, Mike, for those of you guys that live in, in uh, Green River, um, Team Greybeard makes a lot of plastics too. So uh, we'll get into that here in a little bit, the different companies that you can go to. Um yeah, if, if you want to use uh, scent and stuff like that, um, the Lucky 7 uh, Mac Attack is my favorite scent. Uh, it's a scent that I helped uh, develop, and it's a really good scent for lake trout. Um, I really don't use sucker meat a whole lot, um, even for pups. Uh, it's all about presentation. So, um, you know, having that presentation, having that little bit of scent, uh, we actually tested the scent with – just a piece of sucker meat, you know, hooked up to a line. And then one of these with the Lucky 7 sent on there and uh, to see how long the fish would hold on to the bait uh, without being hooked and stay on there. And the scent actually worked uh, about a half a second less than real bait. So um, I fished with buddies who use pieces of sucker meat, um, you know, and have, have done just as good, if not better with that. What's going on, Ethan? Um yeah, the Radical Glow, Grubtails, uh, 
I'm just talking about styles of bait. So like a curly inch like this, you have your tube jigs, you got the the dynamic lure sneak attack. So any any bait like this um, it is killer. This works good. This works amazing for the chase game just because you have that action. The same thing with, with these curly tail grubs. Um, you have these Kai tech uh, shiner, these uh, flukes and stuff like that. All of this stuff works amazing uh, for the chase game. Now, if, if I'm using like these style baits here, I'll use a quarter to three ounce of uh, three quarter ounce or three eighths, sorry, quarter to three eighths uh, ounce jig head on these. And that just depends if I'm pounding the bottom, I'm going to want something uh, that's a little bit heavier. So it stirs up the dirt. If I'm fishing deep water, I'm going to want a heavier jig. So my bait gets down there quicker. Um, there are other options, um, you know, for, for other tubes and stuff, but you know, again, we're talking about a beginner's guide to lake trout fishing, right? We're not talking about technical and getting into all kinds of craziness um these baits or these hooks by cj customs are really good uh you'll notice a lot of smaller fish and even the bigger ones will bite you see the eye of the bait between that fin between the fin on that bait and the eye that's where 90 percent of your lake trout are gonna buy or are gonna bite sorry it drives me nuts Sometimes when you see these guys with these big hooks that come out way out here at the end of the bait, and then they complain, well, hey, uh, I, I'm missing all these bites. Well, yeah, because these fish are coming up and hitting the head of the bait, and that's why you're not hooking up. You'll see it. Uh, some guys as well will, will put the jig in backwards like this so the hook is coming out of the front for a better a better hookup ratio. So I think it was AJ, I saw it on, on post, you were – talking about somebody putting a rip and wrap uh in a tube uh i, I bet it was a i bet it was something like it was a is a jig head like this just a double-sided a double-sided jig and you'll notice on these um where where the eye is located here and that's all about presentation on your bait as well so if if your bait is sitting like this you're probably not going to get bit now uh you know a natural presentation for fish uh no fish sits like this up in the water column. You want that bait like this. And so an easy way to do that, and I'll demonstrate it with this, is see how my bait, see how my bait is sitting like that. Look, look where look where the knot is. Come on, camera. Look where the knot is. You can see it how it's towards the front of the bait. If I move it towards the back, now now look at my bait. See how that see how that bait is sitting more horizontal. It's still a little nose up. So what I like to do is I like to bring it all the way to the back. You can see where my knot is now. Now look at that. The bait is just barely nose down, and that is a natural presentation. Most fish are going to sit nose down like that. So when you're jigging and you miss a fish, and sometimes that fish doesn't come back, it's probably because when you set that hook. See what happens when I set that hook? That knot goes slides to the forward of your loop there. And now your bait is sitting like this. So let's see. Thomas, what were you talking about? Uh, what they were called? Sorry, I got in the zone here. Um, so uh, these tube jigs, anywhere from, from two to six inches, uh, this is a... I want to say it's the, I think it's like, this is the six inch tube here by CJ Customs. Um, this is a perfect size for jigging for both uh, pups and big fish. Um, this, these things have crazy action. So, and you can see, actually, you can see on this bait, well, it's kind of hard to tell. But you can see where the bite marks are up here on the on the front of the tube. I should have kept my other tube I have. It's out in the, in the truck. I should have kept it in the house to show you all the bites um, that are on there. Um, but having that not having that not um, <clears throat> not location is is key to keeping your bait so it's like this or just a little bit nose down. 
Oh yeah, no problem, Thomas. Yep. So these are our CJ customs. So as you can see, they make them in a bunch of bunch of sizes and colors. Those of you guys who've been out on lake uh, on a trip with me, those are my go-to tubes uh, for ice fishing. Um, and once again, you have the trout attacks, but it, it, guys. Any style bait like this, you know, just because I'm talking about a certain bait, like this is, these are products and stuff that I personally use and have success with. It doesn't mean that you, you can't go out there with, with a different version or a different company and, and have the same results. These are just kind of my go-tos and then the, in the style of bait. Um, you can also use spoons. If I'm using spoons, a lot of times I'm jigging the bottom and really aggressive with it. And, uh, you know, if you're having a day where, um, you know, the fish are really biting, oh, I just got a HD in the foot. All right. I got it. Sucker fell down and got me in the foot. Um, if you guys are having a really great day on the ice, try different baits, figure out what else works. It's a good, you know, you're already having a great day. Throw something down there that you haven't tried. Get out of your comfort zone. Try different techniques. Um, and see what happens. So uh, let's see. Anything else on on bait selection? There's there's so much we could use for bait selection. Um, you know, if if I was going lake trout fishing and I could only bring three baits, I would bring I would bring these this trout attack. Um actually scratch scratch that the sneak attack. Uh, I bring these curly tail grubs, the HD ice, and then a tube of some kind of or size, depending on if I knew the size of the, of the average lake trout in the lake um, would depend on my on my tube size. So, uh, you know, like a good three inch tube. I've caught plenty of small lake trout and big lake trout on these just these three inch tubes work great. Uh, doesn't really matter the brand. Uh, hey, Mark, so you can get those. Uh, I went to Ace today in Rock Springs, and they actually had those. Um, if you don't, you can go online um, and go to CJ Custom Lures on Facebook and get them. Um, you can also go, uh, I believe there's a guy, Monk's Tube Jigs. I think he sells them too on uh, on uh, Facebook. Yeah, the Lucky 7 Cent Pen. So, guys, if, if you're looking, um, you know, if – if you're looking to buy um, some dynamic stuff, I'm gonna put the code up here so you guys so you guys will have it. Well, actually, I'm gonna post it in the comments, but um, it'll, it'll get you 15% off. So it's either uh, I believe it's Recon 21 or Recon. A recon 2021. Um, so I, I came off the top of my head. I usually have it saved on my banners, but I got a little crazy on uh, on doing banners today and uh, accidentally went over some of my, my preset banners that I usually do for the show. Um, but yeah, so if you guys look at the comments there, you'll see the code. Uh, and then you'll be able to get that 15% discount on any online order. Uh, before we move on to the next segment, uh, yeah, Discount Tackle, Sportsman's Warehouse, Bass Pro Shops, I'll have them. Uh, if you want the discount, you just got to go to dynamiclures.com. Um, so we're going to be transitioning from bait selection into where are the dang fish. And what I mean by where are the dang fish, structure, right? What part of the lakes um, hold fish? and stuff like that. So um, before we go, you know, if you guys are just tuning in, all you have to do to be entered to win a half day lake trout fishing trip is just like the live post um, or the live feed. Uh, those of you that have gone on the post from last month and commented on there, that gets you an extra entry into it. Thanks, Jacob. Uh, all right. So let's talk about where are the dang fish? Um, you know, they, they're always moving around, but um, over the last few years that I've been lake trout fishing, 
what I'm going to show you on, on the Navionics map, and now this is going to be of Jackson Lake, so it's not a Flaming Gorge. It's not Granby. I don't want to give away spots, you know, or stuff like that. This may give away spots of Jackson. I've never fished up there. I'm just going to show you what I look for when I go to a new lake for structure, and it will help you guys to use that template when you're going somewhere else as well. Uh, Tony, the best depth for Granby for me um, is, you know, is anywhere from that that 40 foot to um, that that 80 foot of water. Um, that that tend that tended to be my best my best depth. Um, so we're gonna get into a little bit more of that. So we're gonna go into perfect. We're gonna go into a uh, screen share here. And we're going to talk about, hey, what's going on, Nunny? Thanks. We are going to talk, we are going to talk about what to look for. And I'm going to show you guys on Navionics. So you guys can see the Navionics map in my cursor. You guys see this big point right here. And I'm going to try to zoom in on this a little bit so you can see. So when you guys are lake trout fishing, you're going to want to look for these big underwater points like this, right? Even if you're fishing from shore, points are awesome. They get you out a little bit deeper typically and away from the shore. And these fish are going to basically swim like this over this. So if I were fishing this, I would probably start right here. And the reason is you see how this quickly drops off right here? These fish, this is like, this is essentially a fish highway. So you're going to get fish that are coming up from the deep, the feed, and you're going to have fish that are up high coming off. So I would probably start in the morning, probably right in here, right on this edge. And then as it gets later in the day, probably move out. Or you would start out here and then kind of move closer to this edge as the day goes on. Um, most lakes I fished, you find these quick drop offs like that. It's, uh, it's, it's amazing structure for fish like that. You can get up on these flats too, that are really good. Um, some of these flats like that, that have access in the deep water, um, are, are really good. There was another spot I was looking at earlier too. Let's see if I can find it. Uh, let's see. Yeah, or even spots like this. Look at this. This this would be a place that I would definitely check out right here. You got this flat right here, this big flat, and then it drops straight down. So it's a great ambush spot for, for predatory fish. Um, it's kind of like when you drive up a hill, right? If you drive up a hill, you, know, you have the hill here and you're driving up. You can't see what's up here until you're up there. So those big fish will sit up there and these fish will come up and then bam, or vice versa. They'll be sitting here and those fish will come off, you know, and the lake trout will be right there. So something like this is really good. These flats are always good uh, for roaming fish. Um, and when I talk, when I look for water depth on these flats, um, I like to ice fish, you know, anywhere from 50 to 80 feet is kind of, is my go-to you know, not fishing Jackson Lake at all, this would be a spot that just being a lake trout fisherman, that's where I would want to go. This over here is like a miniature, excuse me, like a miniature flat in the deep water. You could start up here early morning in the shallower water. And if you don't see anything, kind of move out a little bit. But I would start like right here on this edge. First thing in the morning that says it's 50 foot, that's perfect. You can see it goes from 50 foot to 175 like that. So I would work this and then kind of move out and go from there. Let me pop back into StreamYard here and see. Uh, let's see. All right, no comments. Perfect. Uh, I was in full screen, so I couldn't really see what was what was going on um, comment-wise. Uh, but these are kind of areas that you look for. These drop-offs, the flats, and stuff like that. Um, you know, moving over here, uh, looks like this is pretty deep. I typically don't like to fish too deep, you know. 
But this stuff right here, this would be a, a whole area right here that I would want to check out. The, the, that just looks really good. And then obviously something like this, you see this island and then it drops into very deep water. You could start up here in the 70. Now, my word of advice, you start shallow and work your way out. So last year when I went to check ice fishing conditions at the gorge, I started in about 40, 50 feet of water. I didn't see anything. I was on something like this. I moved out to the next level. Filled, saw one or two fish, not a really whole lot. Moved out to a little bit deeper till I got to that edge, that 70 to 90 foot. And then boom, there's fish everywhere. So you, you don't, if you're looking for fish and you don't know where they're at, this is a good spot right here too, um, squirrel moment. But see this big flat right here? You come up to this shallow water and then this point right down here too um right in here uh any of that stuff is all juicy these little points and these flats and stuff like that all work great so you can see you have the basin here where it's 400 feet and in each one of these it comes it comes up until you have this so if you have your fish finder is color coded as well that is awesome because that gives you an opportunity if you're out of spot um, that maybe the bite is slowed down. You can find another spot just like it super quick. Now I'm going to see if I have it loaded on my maps to show you guys real quick what the color code does and why it's important. Let's see. Uh -huh. There we go. All right, so I'm going to show you guys real quick, kind of just a bunch of spot at the gorge here. I'm going to turn off screen sharing and then bring this back up. So, oh, the stupid lighting is going to really mess this up. You guys can barely see the different color coding here. So this is deep water, and then as I go up in, in shading, it's different colors. So you can really see the structure as you get... Yeah, that ain't going to work too well. But you can really see the shading that I have on there. And, and why that's important is it, it really helps. Uh, when you're, you're running and gunning, you can see where you were looking at. You can find other spots like that through the shading, and you can get it done. Um, let's see. We're going to play catch up on comments. Uh, let's see. Chris wants to know, what if you don't have a topple map uh, for the lake and you don't have, and you don't have electronics? Uh, you know, I, I'm not going to lie. That sucks. Uh, you're going to spend a lot of time drilling holes and finding depths. Um, that would be that. My advice would be, um, you know, uh, try to do some research. There's very few lakes where you don't have a map or if you look at the shore, you can kind of get an idea of what the structure is going to do in smaller lakes and then go from there and, and then drill holes like 15 feet apart in a line going straight out. And then you check the water. You can check the water depth with your, uh, with your line. Um, it's very time consuming. Um, that's how I would go about that. As Aaron said, Navionics is free in the app store. Um, you can download, um, I think it's like $15 for the year, um, for through the boat us app, which is Navionics. Um, and you can download your map onto your phone. So if you're in an area without service, you can go ahead and do it. A lot of these fish finders now, you can chart under the ice. You can chart on your boat. Uh, there's a couple lakes that don't have a lot of maps. I've gone and made my own maps by just going out and trolling um, and doing that. So uh, Chris says, thanks for the helpful comments. Uh, he has electronics. He's asking for the people who are just starting out lake or fishing or just starting out ice fishing. Yeah, if you don't have the funds, um, there's plenty of Facebook groups out there, guys. Um, ice fishing junkies, flaming gorge, uh, fishing, flaming gorge, ice fishing, 
Um, th there's, there's, there's so many out there. Get on there. If you want to go ice fishing, get on there. Be, Hey, I'm new to ice fishing. I don't want to know your secrets. Like, can somebody take me out and, and, and help me out? Um, that's how I learned how to lake trout fish like 12 years ago. Um, you know, was getting on fish explorer. Those of you guys that are in Colorado, you know, it, it, everybody's got a love hate relationship with fish explorer, but there's so much social media stuff that you can get on and say, Hey, you know, I haven't been out here. Would, would somebody be willing to let me, let me tag along and, and look at, um, you know, fish finders and stuff like that. There's also a wide variety of options for electronics that, you, that don't break the bank. Those same Facebook groups, um, yeah, or yeah, you can you can have them pay you can have them pay for me to take them out there, but that's not cheap either. You could probably buy, you know, um, yeah, maybe you guys are watching. Maybe you'll win a trip, and then it, you know, it'll be a cheap option. But it, you can go and get a and get a deeper. Um, you know, you can get a, a, a system called the deeper that hooks up to your phone. Uh, you can go out and get a basic flasher at garage sales. Anything like, like that will help you. You don't need to have, you know, the biggest and the best um, to get out there and catch fish, work your way up. You know, that's, you know, uh, Jeremy, Jeremy and I, back in the day when we started fishing Lake Trout, we didn't, we didn't have anything. We saved up money, went and got a flasher, you know, then the other one went and got a flasher, you know, just, uh, just kind of work your way up through the seasons and ease your way into it. Don't try to do it all at once. Fishing is very expensive. Um, that's a whole other topic, but the deeper is, is, is a cheap way for you to get out there. Um, Garmin has the Garmin striker Four. So if you guys go watch the, the stone cold ice fishing show with Garmin every week, they give they give away a striker unit um, every week, and at the end of the year, they're giving out a live scope. So, a lot of these places are doing giveaways and stuff like that, and so you can go on there and uh, and have opportunities, right? Where there's a will, there's a there's a way. Um, so that's just kind of brainstorming some ideas, but that's kind of what I look for when I look for structure uh, for lake trout. The biggest thing is underwater points are killer. If you have a drop that goes into the river channel. That's a great spot. Um, you know, especially if it's shallower water, if you're, you know, if you're 30, 40 foot, sometimes fishing right in the middle of that river channel, a lot of those bait fish, they're moving through that river channel. Um, that that's a great, great place to go. So these are just kind of basic ideas for you guys, um, you know, to look at, uh, Brady wants to know, uh, what we do when the fish are there. And they are following your jig on the finder, but aren't wanting to bite. Um, I call a few uh, choice words is what I do. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, I really do. But sometimes you're going to have days where you just can't get those fish to bite. And that's where when I talk about utilizing the whole water column. And let me look at where we're at here. Yeah, let's, we'll, go, we'll go back into utilizing the whole water column. What this does and to kind of work on your point, Brady, is this is going to help you be more successful. So that being said, let's say we're fishing in 70 feet of water. I'll use a tube like this on the bottom, and which, which I'm hopping. And then I'll take, uh, you know, I'll take another tube or maybe this or a smaller bait, something like that, and I'll have it up high. And when I mean up high, I'm talking, if you're in 70 feet of water, you want that bait 15 feet off the bottom and you're not moving it. So you're having that bait up here and it's just hanging out. You're jigging at the bottom. What you'll see is a lot of times these fish will shoot up to that, to that higher bait. And what you want to do when that fish gets up there, you want to start reeling, right? That's what we talked about earlier, reeling this speed right here, right? It's a nice medium it's a nice medium speed, and you'll see that fish go up. Now, what I like to do if that fish stops a little bit while I'm reeling, I'll give it a nice little pop like this. So you can see how I have my arm here, how it's flat like this. So if I'm jigging, you know, I'm doing little little movements like this. What you guys don't realize is little movements like that. Like, look, look at this bait. I'm barely shaking it. Now, if I'm going like this, you see how crazy that thing looks, and it's not in the water. 
So it gets exaggerated even more when it's in the water. So sometimes that subtle movement where you see you just call it the, you know, Dave Gens made this famous doing the, the Gens shake, right, for pan fishing. You do the same thing for lake trout. It's just a little shake like this when you're going. A lot of times if you do that, it really, really hammers home to lake trout, to their lateral lines that they have. They really pick up that extra vibration when, when you're doing that quiver. What that replicates is a fish that's in distress or a fish that is stressed out. And then that, what that does is that activates the lake trout, it, their instincts to go up and hit that bait. Yeah, so fishing maps is a great way too um, <clears throat> that you can go out and use. Uh, Mike, I'm not sure what you're posting. Um, I don't see anything. I just see your name out there a bunch of time. <clears throat> Uh, nunny nunny is a natural shaker so sometimes i yell at him for um zach wants to know if it's true i don't wear underwear no i wear i wear underwear man that's weird but okay um oh yeah ethan the the show is called garmin stone cold ice fishing um um no so zach um you know, with these descenders, lake trout are one of the few fish that can actually naturally burp and and naturally let stuff out. We'll get into that when we get there in a little bit. Um, yeah, the salsa. Um, yep, Jake, we're we're getting we're getting into hook sets. We're we got a um, we got a nice little timeline here that we're working with in order, and so we're, we'll we'll get into hook sets because um, that's gonna. That might be a little entertaining for you guys when we get there. Um, but utilizing that whole water column, especially, you know, if you guys are fishing two guys in the hut, one should be focused on the bottom. The other one should be focused on, you know, 15 feet or halfway in the water column. I don't know how many big fish I've seen guiding that are, you know, 10 to 20 feet under the ice. I've had a lot of times where I'm dropping my bait down where I drop my line down and I'm like, I'm in a hundred feet of water. Like, why did my, why, I, my, why did my line stop? It takes a while for your brain to process like what, like, Hey, Hey dummy. Like you should probably be setting the hook right now. Cause the fish has got it in its mouth. Uh, last, last year I was doing that. I dropped it down and I'm like, had a brain fart, you know, it was first thing in the morning. I'm like, why the heck isn't my bait going down? Am I, did my line get caught on the ice? And I looked down the hole. There's like a 20 pound lake trout like this. Yeah shaking the crap out of my bait and i was so like holy crap i forgot to set the hook so that was fun um but what going back to what we were talking about one guy should be working the bottom the other guy should be off the bottom and if a fish comes up the guy in the bottom don't be a jack wagon and start reeling your stuff up <laughs> what's going on john don't be a jack wagon and and, and reel your stuff up right um Keep your bait down there. Let the guy that's working the stuff up there. So real basic stuff. So if you're fishing by yourself, you can have one rod on the bottom, one up. That can get interesting at times too. Um, but just working that whole water column when you're ice fishing um, <clears throat> really helps you, especially with pups. A lot of times you'll see pups, they'll come in schools and uh, most of them are suspended off the bottom, uh, at least at the gorge. I know Granby Lakers, it's the same thing. You have the darker Lakers, which are usually suspended fish, and then you have the bottom dwellers that are lighter. Um, so Drew wants to know if I've ever caught a big lake trout in shallow water, 15 feet or less. Um, yeah, there, there's, you know, a lot of the guys that fish, you know, for big fish, um, fish shallow water, and I'll just keep it at that. Um, you can definitely catch them. You catch a bunch of them in, in deep water, but, you know, those fish are moving up where, where the bait is. And so if you're catching rainbows and there's lake trout in the lake, chances are if you, you know, fish for Lakers, you'll probably see, you know, it's not just the big ones. The little ones will go there, too. Um, the tug is the drug, Christopher. You're right. Uh, let's see. So Chip wants to know, do you jig the whole time or do you wait to see it on your electronics? Um, if I'm working the bottom... Um, you know, I, I have my cadence that I'll, that I'll do and I'll jig. Um, mainly I have my live scope on and that's because I can see these fish like a hundred feet away. And so I can do different presentations. Now that's more of an intermediate to advanced technique. 
Um, but you know, if I'm fishing for pups or just, you know, beginner stuff, yeah, you know, I'm constantly pounding the bottom or just letting it, letting it sit and, uh, doing stuff like that. Um, yeah, Brady, we're not, we're not talking about uh big fish today. We're just doing a beginner's, a beginner's guide, um, <clears throat> to lake trout fishing. Some of the stuff I've talked about, um, already works, works for big fish. Um, but this is, like I said, this is just a, a beginner's guide, um, to lake trout fishing. Um, Tony wants to know how long we stay in one spot before moving. Yeah. 15 to 20 minutes is good. Half hour max. Um, you know, uh, half hour max, you know, if you're not seeing, usually if, if I'm sitting at a spot and I don't see fish in like 15 minutes, I, I'm, I'm moving. Um, you know, just trying to be active and, and seeing fish, or if I drill a hole and you see fish and then you don't see fish for 20 minutes, I'll usually move in it until you get into, um, you know, active fish moving through. So it's all about finding that, that fish highway, you know, elk in other game use game trails, lake trout and other trout fish in general, they have their own fish highways and stuff like that, that they use, um, as well. Um, yeah, so, um, you know, the bet, I would say the best time for, um, for fishing through the ice in general, uh, for me is like 10 to one, um, early morning is, it can be really happening. I don't know how many times I'll, you know, have clients out and I'll, I'll drop the line, the bait down to the bottom and I'll, I'll be showing them, Hey, this is what you guys need to do. And then bam, there's a fish pass the rod off and then all right now you're in the fire you get to try it and uh you know do that um so it i will say you know morning is morning is uh generally uh is generally better until about one o'clock and then things start to slow down uh things start to slow down and until about a half hour before sunset and then things pick back up again um so Let's see, Robin and Doug, they said, can you talk about jig head types and where to get them for the bigger tubes, eights and up? Uh, yeah, you know, like I said, we're talking about a beginner's guide to lake trout fishing, guys. So we're talking about beginner stuff. You know, fishing baits like this isn't beginner lake trout. Um, you know, so I, I showed a bunch of tubes. You know, these, these are always good. Uh, this shank is actually a little bit longer than what I prefer um shorten that shank up you know to about probably right there would be perfect um but you know if you guys are using tubes and stuff like that you want to make sure um and this is this is a good tip for beginners is make sure that you don't get the really cheap hooks that bend super easy lake trout have an extremely tough mouth and so you really need to set that hook on there and you and you need a really good hook that doesn't bend a whole lot so it can get in there and stick in there. Um, so I like to use the, the heavier wire, um, you know, jig heads. So, you know, the usual jig heads, um, you know, I think uh, Christensen's Lakeshore Tackle sells a kit that you can buy for 40 bucks that comes with jigs and tubes and all different kinds of stuff in there that works pretty good. What's going on, Ryan? Um Chris wants to know what my favorite Colorado lake to fish for Lakers is. Um, I'd probably say Williams Fork is is one of my favorites. Uh, Granby was where I started. Uh, Granby and Grand Lake. Uh, Grand Lake is is really overlooked. There, you know, there's some good fish in there. It'll make you work for them. Um, but I, Granby or Grand Lake would be a lake. The two lakes, if I was just getting into lake trout fishing, that I would recommend that you go. Uh, you know, try out. Um, all right, let's see. All right, let's talk about, um, let's talk about keeping the fish on preventing fish stories. Um, so this is where we're going to bring in the first picture here. And it's going to give you guys an idea of how you should be holding your rod when you're jigging. And then also I'll kind of show you the hook set. Um, so let's pull this up real quick.
All right. So we'll wait for this to catch up. But you can see how the butt of my rod is, if you look at my elbow, is up and the tip of my rod is down. The reason for that is when you have that like that, I'm going to use this little rod here just to show you guys. And this little sucker is getting hooked, catching me all over the place. Um, so I like to hold it like this and that's so you know if i'm holding it down like that and i go to set the hook you see now my rod is what would be about um would be about waist high when i set the hook and what that allows you to do is when you're fishing you know and you set that hook and you're right here that allows you to keep that tension if you're already right here and flat like i see a lot of people who jig where they're their rod is like this and you set the hook. Now look where your rod is. Subconsciously, the first thing you're going to do is drop that rod tip without reeling and that bait that's hooked in that fish's mouth like this. When you drop it, it's going to, it's going to go like this. That weight's going to pull back down and it's going to pop that jig right out of that lake trout's mouth. So you can see how I'm holding that rod. It's angled down like this. So when I set that hook, it's a really quick, pop like this so you have it i like to keep my arm down at my side like this and when i set that hook it's like you're doing a bicep curl it's just a short pop like that and you're right there a lot of guys i like to why they take they set the hook and they end up way the heck up here which is bad but it can still you can still work through it so let's say you are jigging like this and you set the hook and you're like this what do you do you reel faster and you slowly lower your rod down, your rod tip down to the to the hole while reeling faster. And once you get there, then you slow down. Because what a lot of people do is they'll set that hook and then they drop their line. And with lake trout, usually you can't get away with you can't get away doing that because that hook's gonna pop right out unless you keep that tension. So this is kind of how I hold it, and you can see with that rod too. I split my hand like this and I put it in the grip like this and keep my thumb out. And that allows me to have a lot of times I'll keep the butt underneath my forearm. So when I'm jigging like this and I go to set that hook, it's a pop like that. So just a short pop. And then you, and then you want to make sure once you get there, you reel and keep and keep that tension on there. All right, I'm going to pop off this, and we're going to hop back. I'm going to get caught up on comments because I see there's a couple comments on there. Let's see. Hey, there's almost. Jeffrey, what's going on, pontoon? Um, Landon, I have not fished uh, Fish Lake in Utah. Um, yeah, tight lines for nothing. Exactly. That's exactly right. You want to keep those tight lines. Uh, Bob said he's fished the gorge once for pups, but they never just nibbled. They would pull uh, my rod in the, in the my pole in the water. My pole holder would stop it from going through the ice. Uh, yep, I mean that happens too. Um, no footage of the yeah, unpinned dance. Oh, there's <laughs> there's a uh, yeah. That's Jason brings up a good uh, yeah. There's the the fish got away dance and, and other uh, choice <laughs> choice words that 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 come with that um, as well. Um, but let me look here. Let's get caught up on here. Uh, let's see. How do you catch fish using the wrong hand? Well, um, I don't know. I, I'd say maybe I beg to differ that maybe it is the right hand with the fish that I catch, Josh. I'm not sure. Um, I'm a little, I'm a little half backwards anyway. So, um, Dustin wants to know if I set the hook more than once. Uh, typically I don't, um, if I feel like maybe, maybe I didn't get a good hook set, um, you know, I'll, 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 uh, I'll do it again. But, um, you know, s some guys, that's what they like to do. They like to do the double hook set. I, I don't really think you need to do that unless you feel like you had a bad, uh, a bad hook set and then 
then you uh, you can do it again. Um, Dean wants to know if I make specialty rods. I see yours have larger butts on them. Uh, yeah, Dean, um, Fetters Custom Rods, uh, Jeff Fetters on Facebook. Uh, he's a good guy to get a hold of. That's who makes uh, my custom lake trout rods. Um, and you bring up a good point with talking about the these longer handles. You're going to get a, a lot better control of these big fish, too, with these bigger handles. You're not going to kill yourself reeling these fish in. Um, this is this is a perfect – I love this rod here. Um, I believe this is a 45-inch. This is a 45-inch heavy rod. Um, and I, I just I, – I like having that. It gives you, it gives you better control, and – it doesn't it doesn't whip you when you get these big fish and they go on the runs. Um, yeah, Liam, uh, so we, we talked about weights and stuff like that uh, a little earlier in the show. Um, you can go to the YouTube page on Recon Angling and, and kind of go over there and look at that. But uh, Torch brings up a yeah, good point of, of leverage. And with these lake trout, it's, it's all about leverage. And that's why having your rod, you know, um, having your rod – angled like this is when you set that hook now you're right here and you got that leverage to where you can go down and i always keep my rod angled like this it just it just keeps it keeps that leverage in that fish pinned when you're down like this and we might be able to show you what i'm talking about so if i have it like this and the fish is going you know and my rod's down like that i can i can have that good control if i'm up here you know, and the fish is going, you see how that rod is, is bent and it's really not, you can't really tell, but going up here, you don't have the pressure that you do when you're right here. When I'm right here and going different ways and my rod tip is down, you know, if you have a rod at home with something on it, just try it. <coughs> Angle your rod down like this, hold on to the bait and just pull with your rod down and then put your rod up like this. And then do the same pull. You can you can feel the difference of tension when you're up here. There's not a whole lot of tension going on. When you're tipped down like this, you can you can feel the the tension different difference. So when you're out on the water, you just want to keep that in mind. Um, you know, don't be afraid to go out and film yourself. Set the GoPro up and film yourself jigging, and look at the tendencies of what you're doing. When, when you're jigging, when you set the hook, what are you doing? This is all stuff, you know, that football players go and watch film. This is how I became a better lake trout angler. I feel myself fishing and was like, holy cow, when I missed that fish, this is why. This is where my rod was. This is what I was doing. And um, it, it really helps you kind of catch what you're doing that you don't realize uh, you're doing. Uh, so... David says, don't stick the rod tip down the hole. Let the rod do. Um, yes and no. Uh, there are certain times um, where I will keep that angle, but I will, I will, when the ice is thin, um, I, I don't have a problem. I don't have a problem sticking my rod, my rod down the hole uh, when the ice is, is thinner. Now, when the ice is thicker, you definitely, you definitely don't want to do that. You definitely want to move around, you know, the hole and, and try to keep that line um off the ice as much as possible and that's where using braid uh can be kind of your best friend and your worst friend at the same time if you don't do a good job of keeping that line off the ice that braid will cut through the ice and then you got to figure out how to get that out without losing the fish but what braid does allow you to it does allow you to to rub on that ice without really having to worry about um of of losing your bait or breaking your line hey thanks dean uh, he said, not sure I can like you with the cheese head in the background. <laughs> yeah, well, you, the spotted cow is great. That was I was back in Wisconsin last week and uh, uh, had to smuggle a case of, of spotted cow back with me. Um, so let's see. Uh, Dean, um, we if, if you if you go on our YouTube page and, and go you can go backwards on the live show. Um, about halfway through where we're at right now, we talked about um, the differences between mono and braid and, and what to and what to do. So I'm not going to go over that uh, again. Um, yeah. So same thing, John. Um, 
same thing, man. We we went over we went over that stuff earlier in the live show. Uh, just real briefly, any 30 series rod um, with in a spinning works great. Uh, bait casting, um, you know, I use Abu Abu Zetas and the Black Maxes work good if you're on a budget. And the Abu Black Max is the way to go. Um, you know, if you got some money to spend, uh, uh, a Revo X or a, a Toro Beast works good. The Zetas are by far my favorite. Adam Murray, hey, thanks, man, for thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you next time. Um, but let's see kind of where we're at. So we're actually kind of getting, we're actually kind of getting back towards the end of it. So, um, maybe I will go back and talk about a few things. So if you guys have, before we talk about the population control tournament coming on and then the giveaway that they're doing too, we're going to talk about that because there's, a, there's an easy way for you guys to win a very nice cooler. Um, but if you guys have any questions about what we talked about tonight, um, Now's a good time. We're getting to the end uh, of the show. Now's a great time to go on there and post some questions. Or if you're not sure about something, we can recap a little bit. If it's something that we went over in depth, uh, I will ask that, you know, once the live show is done, you go on the YouTube page and just kind of go back and you'll see where we were talking about um, certain stuff. Um, but we, we still have, we still have, you know, about 15 or 20 minutes of talking left. Uh, so the show isn't done quite yet. Uh, but we're getting to we're getting towards the end, so we have a little bit of time, uh, actually more time than I thought we were going to have to go over some stuff. Uh, so James said he's fishing a lake that has a small population of lake trout, but a large population of rainbows. Uh, yeah, so uh, James, I would look at you know maybe some uh, deeper structure. I'm not sure how how deep. Uh... All right, James, take care. Um, I'm not sure, uh, you know, how deep it is, but, you know, for lake trout, you know, if you can find that 40 to 60 foot range on a deep point or something like that, um, that's kind of where I would look uh, for lake trout is on those edges, those runs, those flats, something that goes from shallow to deep really good and fish that edge um, would work good. So, uh, so this right here, Hope, uh, CJ Custom Lures on Facebook, and then I think Monk's Tube Jigs, um, I believe he makes some like this as well. Um, if you're in the Green River or Rock Springs area in Wyoming, you can get these at uh, Ace Hardware has a bunch of these. Yeah, <laughs> Target Rainbows, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, target rainbows. You'll probably get a you'll probably get a, a lake trout um, coming in on that. All right, let's see. So let's see. Chip wants to know: fishing with tubes, are you jigging? Or are you just a short jig more? Um, well, you know, that depends. So when I'm fishing on the gorge, the gorge is very different lake trout fishing than anywhere else. Anywhere else, you know, I, I like to hop the tube off the bottom or even bring the tube up suspended and play the chase game. Um, but most of my jigging is just a short like this. Just kind of going like that uh, off the bottom, making sure that bait hits the bottom uh, every time. Um we're going to real quick, we're going to talk about the uh, population control and domination tournament uh, up at Flaming Gorge. Um, so for those of you guys that are wanting uh, wanting to fish that event, uh, it's coming up in, a, in about a month and a half, roughly. Uh, let me go ahead and share the screen real quick with you guys. All right, so it's February 12th and 13th at Flaming Gorge Reservoir, and this is out of Buckboard Marina. So, um, you know, the information down here, um, let's see. Perfect. We'll pop this up so it's easy to see. So it's a lake trout only contest, and only lake trout under 25 inches are eligible. Uh, you guys got a team member, <clears throat> uh, two to four people. And then each team member can enter uh, 12 lake trout 
uh, under 24 or 25 inches uh, per day or 24, you know, for the tournament. Uh, and then you have the entry fees and stuff here. Uh, you got the, also you got the tagged, tagged lake trout and stuff like that um, on there. And then, so they're doing, uh, how they're doing the weight is by the average team weight. So it kind of shows you the formula. If you guys go on the Facebook page too, it's, it's population control and domination. It has all the information on there and they're actually giving away a, uh, I believe a 55 quart lifetime uh, cooler for December. And all you have to do is post a picture. You have to register for the tournament um, and then post a picture of you fishing uh, to win for the month of to enter to win for the month of December. Um, let me pop back here. I was also going to show you guys real quick too. If you get a big fish, um, if you get a big fish on, I was going to show you how to, um, I was going to show you guys how to release a big fish. You know, a lot of guys like to just, you know, I'll get my, my little buddy here. Um, you know, a lot of guys, you know, like to hold the fish by the tail and then go back and forth like this. I, I usually don't, I usually don't recommend doing that. You know, if you're fishing off the boat, I like to do what's called a torpedo where, I'll cradle the fish and then kind of shoot them down to the water like this. And that usually gets that gets the water flowing one way through the gills, the natural way. And so that fish goes down and then usually swims off. You really want to refrain from going like this. The easiest way is to set the fish like this. And I'll show you guys. Uh, let me go get this share this other screen and I'll show you guys a very quick video um, maybe I'll show you guys a quick a quick video of what to do I essentially hold them by the tail and then you'll you'll feel them just kind of move so I'll let it play again but you'll see his tail you see how his tail just flicks that lets you know that they're ready so you hold them there you can see his gills are moving. You just hold them there until the fish is ready to go, and you'll see their, you'll feel their tail kick. And once you do that, just let go, and the fish goes. Boom, and it, it goes. So, um, you know, just just some other some other tips too. Um, you know, if if you are releasing fish or anything, or if if you want to weigh fish, anything like that. If you know you have a big fish on and you're fishing with somebody, have them get the scale ready. I, I always like to bring like the hoop of a net out if I'm ice fishing. So you're not putting laying that fish on the ice. And that way you get the fish up. It goes in that hoop net. You have the scale ready to go. You weigh it and then you, you can release that fish. You can do all this. You can measure, weigh and take a picture in 30 seconds or less you really don't want to keep these fish out any longer than a half a minute a minute at most the easiest way to think about it is how long can you hold your breath for the same thing is going to go for the fish um let's see liam said he's just getting started lakers in new hampshire uh great show keep up the good work thanks uh brady wants to talk about uh tipping or not tipping jigs uh i don't really tip jigs personally um, if I will say, and that's one thing we forgot to go over. Um, if you are going to use sucker meat and you're jigging, you want to make sure that your piece of sucker meat isn't wider than the body of the bait that you're using. If it is, it's going to look, um, it, you'll still catch fish, but it won't, um, it won't look as nat a natural of a presentation. So if you're using a smaller bait like this curly tail grub, you know, a good rule of thumb is you don't, and I have pretty thick hands, but you don't you don't want to use a, a strip of meat thicker than your pinky finger. You know, if, if you're using a if you're using a bait like this, you want to kind of match the width of the chunk of your sucker meat. You want I like to use a strip more than a chunk. If you're using a bait like this, you go back to the rule of no th no thicker than your than your pinky on it. Same thing if you're going to use a smaller bait like that. That's about the same size as, as my pinky. Um, so I'd want to go just, just a hair smaller on that. 
Um, but you, you definitely don't want to have too big of a, a piece of a sucker meat because then you have an extra thing going on and your bait doesn't, your bait doesn't swim, uh, the way, the way it's supposed to. Um, so Anthony wants to know what scent I recommend. Uh, personally, I use uh, dynamic lures. Um, so it's the, let's see, I'll put it in here. It's the Lucky 7 uh, Mac, Mac Attack. That is, that is uh, the scent that I personally like to use. Um, uh, no, I don't think I'm going to be able to hit any waters in Colorado this year. Um, unfortunately, uh, I'm not going to make it up that way. I'm actually leaving first thing in the morning tomorrow. I'm going up to West Yellowstone, Henry's Lake, uh, to do some fishing and stuff. And then, like I said, those of you that are watching, all you have to do, uh, to win a free half day guided fishing ice or ice or open water lake trout trip, uh, for two people is like the live feed. So that's all you have to do. Um, those of you who have liked and commented on the previous posts I did last month um, about this giveaway, that will give you an extra entry. But for those of you looking to to get into this one, all you have to do is like the live show. And in the next couple of days, um, I'm going to go ahead and announce the winner live. Um, Tyson, um, I am going to go up there probably for uh, – they got the hybrids up there, so they have the cut bows, cutthroats, and brookies. So a little mixture of everything, so smaller trout. Um, I say that, but a uh, year before last, I was up there and caught a 16-pound six, hybrid. It was 33 and a half inches up there. Um, it was it was an amazing – it was amazing cut bow. Um, it was pretty awesome. But, but yeah, that's uh, – that's kind of what I'm going up there for this year. And I ride my snowmobiles a little bit and just kind of unwind before ice finally shows up here uh, at the gorge. Um, no, Natalie, I, I never use a uh, drop shot uh, for lake trout, really. Um, I just kind of, this is the stuff uh, that I use. Typically, I'm fishing, you know, pretty deep water, uh, but it might be something worth trying out this year. Uh, Logan wants to know if, if there'll still be plenty of boatable water on the gorge, uh, around mid January. Um, yeah, I would, I would say on the Utah side, most definitely down by Lucerne will most likely be, you know, be open, uh, to boating. We were out there last week and the water temperature is still 41 degrees. Um, to go back and answer some questions, some guys wanted to know like what size, what size reel I like to use. Um, I I really like these Abu Garcia uh, Revo X's. Uh, this is a, a 30 series, um, really smooth drag. Um, it's got the the bearings and the ratio to handle big fish uh, with ease. Um, and then I use 30 pound Berkley X9 braid, um, and then 15 to 20 pound um, Berkley uh, fluorocarbon leader. Uh, yeah, uh, junior, uh, jig and spoons. Um, I like to use the bigger ones. Um, I want to say it's the doctor spoon. They're about, I don't have any here. Uh, they're about, they're about anywhere from four to six inches. And I like to jig those, uh, on the bottom. Uh, you can do it mid water column too. It is a good way to catch fish, uh, mid water column jigging really aggressive on those spoons. A lot of times they'll hit it on the fall. So the bait will fall and you'll go to jig again and the, there'll be a fish on there. Um, I haven't really tried Swedish pimples uh, a whole lot. Cast masters work pretty good uh, for just about anything actually through the ice. Um, but yeah, if, if you guys uh, go to the population control and domination on Facebook, uh, you will be able to register for the tournament at the gorge if you have it. And if you do post a picture on their giveaway uh, to win a really nice, uh, a really nice cooler down there. Yeah. A little Clio works good too. Um, I mean, a spoon's a spoon, you know, whatever, whatever one you like, uh, I think works pretty good. 
Um, all right. Well, I'm going to kind of leave it, leave it open for about a minute or so. For those of you who have any further questions, uh, this is a good time. We can talk about, we got about five minutes or so. We can talk about any kind of ice fishing. If you want any questions, uh, we'll, uh, we got about another four and a half, five minutes before, before we'll, uh, end the show. So it's a great time. If you guys have any other questions, uh, we can go ahead and end those. Uh, so Brady wants to know if the weather or cloud cover has anything to do with the color of the jig. Um, you know, typically, typically not a whole lot. Um, you know, when you're fishing a hunt down, um, I, I tend to use the same colors, white, uh, white or white or green. That's pretty much the, the two colors when I'm fishing that low. Um, yeah, that's, that's kind of what I like is, you know, white or green, um, it doesn't really seem to matter when you're fishing that deep, uh, water, if you're fishing shallower stuff, um, you know, on overcast days, I like to use more natural colors. Um, just that, that darker color down there, um, tends to show up a little bit more. And then when it's brighter, I'll use, I'll use like some chartreuses or maybe some like whites and stuff like that. Um, fronts and storms, barometric pressure all plays a big role um in, in the in the catching fish especially trout i always tell guys if you want to have the best day of your life ice fishing for trout go in the middle of a blizzard you get that low pressure stuff coming through it really turns these fish on um yeah so i jacob i i use uh crawdad or crawdad patterns all the time especially fishing for rainbows and browns even perch uh through the ice um I don't have those out either. Uh, I like to use like the little two and a half to three inch uh, uh, crawdads and just kind of jig them on the bottom. It works really good. Uh, pre storms always better than after, uh, in my opinion. Um, uh, I think we did away with the crawdad one, Josh. I think I still have some. Uh, it, it just came out to the number of people that we're not buying it. So we just kind of kept the ones around that people were buying. Let's see what's perfect time, uh, to be in the water in the morning. Um, yeah, you know, I like to, I like to get out there just before the sun is coming up to make sure all my stuff is set up. And then, you know, it typically if you're fishing <clears throat> for lake trout, you can get into a really good bite, uh, just before sunrise, uh, until like eight o'clock. And if I'm targeting big fish, um, you know, that 10 to that 10 o'clock in the morning to one seems to be really good. Um, <clears throat> so, and in Utah, um, all you have to do is, is like the live show to get entered to win. So that's all you have to do is, is like the live show that's going on right now. Uh, let's see if you target pups specifically, do you target the same structure? Yep, I do. So Jake, all the stuff we talked about, um, you know, I, I tend to, I do the same stuff. So with pups, you know, I will fish in that 30 to 80 foot water. Um, and, and that's where, that's the depth I kind of stick to. Um, uh, yep. Glow tubes and grubs, the, the Yamamoto grub here. This is, this is a glow, a glow grub. Um, you probably can't probably can't see it a whole lot but glow works really good especially especially for pups these little curly tail the glow ones work really good um thanks dustin yeah moon phase uh i hate i hate full moon so you know when you're fishing a full moon you you, you want to look at, at when the moon set is because you usually have about an hour after moon set and then the bite kind of dies off um a week a week and a half after a full moon is usually best for lake trout fishing for big ones. Now that doesn't mean you can't go out on a full moon and have an epic day, but uh, typically full moon fishing is is a little bit slower and more of a first thing in the morning because that moon sets. Um, you, you have about an hour after moon set, um, so I'm a big believer in that. Same thing, uh, you know, a lot of guys that fish musky will tell you the same thing too. Uh, Eric wants to know if I tip the hook when I'm fishing for pups. Usually I don't. Um, I just use scent and it seems to work uh, just as good. Um, and like I said, if, if you do use uh, bait, you know, make sure that it's no thicker than the bait that you're using when you cut the strip of it. 
So Junior says those bigger fish usually group together in the same size class. Um, yes and no. I mean, I've I've seen them on live scope where you have big fish and then there's little fish right next to them. I've seen big you can tell the difference on live scope between a big fish and a small fish. And I've had big fish come in and little fish come and take the bait away. So I you know, some circumstance I'll say it, it it's uh you know, you'll get a lot of the same size fish, but there are, there's plenty of times where those fish will be, will be mixed up. Um, for smaller Lakers, we've had pretty good luck at night, but usually it's more like uh, three or four hours before sunrise as opposed to sunset. Uh, so Chris, most of my trips are, are for big Lakers, but we usually end up catching a really good mix of, of both sides. So we'll, we'll catch, we'll catch a bunch of, uh, you know, five to 12 pounders and then, you know, 15, 20 pounders. The goal of each ice fishing trip or lake trout trip I do is, is one fish, you know, 20 pounds or bigger, um, or, you know, at least 15 pounds. Uh, but you know, it, a lot of it depends on all the skill level and stuff like that. Uh, Dustin, I think the biggest variable, and and you can attest to this fishing with me, is just presentation and attention to detail. Uh, those the the big the big girls when they come through, they give you one shot, and that's it. And that's presentation, hook set, everything. You got one shot, and that's it. The smaller ones, you can the smaller ones, you can get them off, and they'll come back and hit it again. The big ones won't. So it's just attention to detail, um, you know, and just following the steps. Um, yeah, keeping maintaining sharp hooks. Uh, get a hook sharpener. It's uh, it's very important, especially especially with lake trout. If you're going like this and not you know not hooking yourself or making your finger look like that, playing with a hook, it's not sharp enough. Uh, you'll want to you'll want to sharpen it. But yeah, it's you definitely want to make sure you're checking your your hooks. And even even if you go to the store and get a hook, doesn't mean it's sharp. So I like to do the little the little test where I put it on my, put it on my thumb and then go like this. And if it, it pulls the skin up, you know, it makes your finger a little bit rough. It's pretty sharp. Uh, as far as knots, I just use basic, the basic fisherman knot. Um, I'm not real fancy when it comes to knot. It's super quick and fast to do. Um, and it's, it's worked out pretty good. I will say, you know, when you get a big fish, after you get a big fish, uh, to go ahead and, and retie, you can see it's just a regular fisherman's knot. Um, retie your retie your bait up, you know. Um, even after going and catching like you know maybe five or ten pups, just retie your bait on there because those suckers got teeth. You don't realize it, but they really have they have teeth and and they do they do knot your line and and work away um on your line so you want to make sure that you're you're retying and that goes back to the difference between catching small fish and landing that big fish is just doing those small things right leads to the big picture so it's just it's just like anything in life you got to do the small things right before you can do the big things yeah i i always tell i always tell people of of when when uh i was getting a hook out of a fish and it, it's those those laser trocars so they have the extra long it's kind of like this one where you have the extra long shank before the barb and it went down underneath uh underneath my thumbnail while it was still hooked in the fish and i'm not gonna lie i screamed pretty darn loud on that one Let's see, braid to floor. Yeah, just a double surgeon's knot, Steve, on that. Um, let's see if I can actually find that without getting too crazy here. So I just do a double a double surgeon's knot. That one, it, the tagline's a little, is a little much on it. I probably need to cut it off a little bit, but you can see minus that little tag line it it does stay pretty uh does stay pretty thin 
feel like a cat right now. Hey, thanks, Kendall. Uh, Logan wants to know, do I find your fish on the flattest part of whatever structure you're fishing, like a lot of places in Colorado? Uh, or are you searching an entire hump or point? Usually, you know, I like the fish points. Um, you can go on big flats, too, um, and find fish. But I'm a big point guy. I'll go to the tip of the point, and that's, and that's kind of where I'll fish. And, you know, if you guys are out and you have access to a snowmobile, a four-wheeler, or if you can drive a car out on the lake, and you have mapping on your phone or your fish finder, and you go to a point, take that whatever vehicle you're on and outline that point using your map with the tractor vehicle. And what that allows you to do is you can work different spots of that point without wasting a whole lot of time. You don't need to look at your finder. You drove around the point, essentially, the border of the point with your maps, you know, zoom in so you're you know, at 50 foot distance and then do the outline of that hump or that break. And, and it saves you a lot of time in the long run where you don't have to look at your finder and walk around. You can use the track of your vehicle to go and, and look at where that, where that structure definition line is and, and work it. Hey, what's going on, Kurt? Yeah, you made it right at, right at the end. Um, so yeah, hey, no problem, Eric. Let's see. Utah wants to know what size rod you use when on the ice for big Lakers. Um, you know, it, it really depends. Um, if you go back towards the beginning of the show, um, if you go back on YouTube, I go pretty in depth on that uh, for you. Um, but all my rods are custom rods for big fish. So I like a 44 to 48 inch rod, um, you know, that has a really uh, a long butt on it. That gives you better handling and you know a 30 series a 30 series spinning reel or you know a low profile bait caster works good uh ryan wants to know um if we ever hook into bigger fish dead sticking yeah at the gorge a lot of guys that's what they do they just dead stick they'll bring it and then they'll uh they'll just hold it like an inch off bottom essentially um and just let it sit there i don't like doing that because it drives me nuts uh, yeah, the YouTube Tony is just recon angling. So uh, just go on there and it should be on there. And once I finish the show, I'll publish it too. Um, so you'll be able to go back and watch it on Facebook as well. Yeah, Kurt. So my go to uh, for ice fishing right now, I actually have two. So I really like Corker's boot. Um, and then um, since joining Striker last year, I ordered their, their new boot that they have. And uh, I really like that, too. It, lo it looks sort of like a muck boot. Uh, it's super warm, 1,200 grams of thin slit. And uh, it, it it really keeps my feet warm without having, like, really thick socks. Um, so those would be my two my two, uh, my two two choices. For, uh, Corkers just came out with a new muck, muck boot style, too. And what I like about the Corkers is... You don't need to get um, you don't need to get uh, oh man now I can't think of it you don't need to get ice creepers because uh, with the corkers they come with the interchangeable soles and it comes with a pair of interchangeable soles so they're, they're it's a really cool feature but the striker boots uh, are really really good price wise and uh, they're they're twelve hundred they're twelve hundred grams and so they're a super warm boot and they're waterproof and flexible too. As far as strike striker bibs go, um, you can't go wrong with the striker predator, the whole suit in general. Um, I actually just got the new uh, the new predator suit in today. Um, so I'm looking forward uh, I'm looking forward to using them. Sorry, striker, you just got oh that's strike master Kurt uh, for the auger. Um, I actually, we actually just got a deal with, um, with razor augers. And, uh, for those of you not familiar with razor, they used to make a lot of the electric electrical, uh, engines for 
the other brands and then decided to make their own. So um, I'm really looking forward uh, to getting out on the ice this year uh, with the Razor Augers. Um, so, yeah, the climate suits are really nice um, as well. Uh, they're, they're a little bit less. They're more – you can move around pretty good. Um, you know, if, if you want to make yourself a ice shelter, essentially, I, I'd recommend getting the, the new Ace or the, the Predator. Uh, if you want something that's going to get you out to your hut um, and that you can move around in, that's waterproof, so it gives you the floating stuff, you know, definitely uh, um, the climate suit is really good. Yeah. Yeah, the, yeah those, the little razors are nice. I, I really – I really try to align myself with, with companies, the products that I, I use and trust. And, you know, I, I'm very abusive on stuff as a guide. Um, so I want stuff that's going to, um, you know, hold up. And if it holds up to me using it, I know it's going to hold up for you guys. So Brad wants to know if catching a lot of pups, if I stay put and hope for a big girl or change locations. Um, it just depends. I have a few spots where, you know, typically first thing in the morning, you'll catch smaller fish. And then as the day progresses, the bigger ones kind of move in and you'll see less and less of the smaller fish. Now, if you're just seeing nothing but small fish, um, yeah, I would definitely, I would definitely move. So uh, anyway, guys, uh, we're approaching the uh, two hour mark. So I got to hop off on here. So that way I'm able to uh, save this stuff. Uh, I appreciate each and every one of you guys tuning in. Like I said, if you want to go ahead and enter to win a free half-day guided fishing trip for two, all you need to do is, is like this post. There was a post from a month ago, too. Um, if you comment on that, it'll give you an extra entry into that. Um, otherwise, I will more than likely be live Thursday sometime during the day. Um, I'm going to be live fishing, so... If you guys want to want to learn how to mess with the live scope, see the difference between live scope and flasher. Um, I'll, I'll have that stuff set up in my hut. We'll do it real time um, fishing for smaller trout, and then I will also announce uh, the winner of the trip. So I, I genuinely appreciate everybody watching and and the comment and the conversation. I hope you guys stay safe out there. Have a happy new year. Tight lines. We'll catch you next time.